Hello Super Sentence Stackers. Welcome to the classroom. You're here because you have watched La Luna and you have chosen your chunk. Now, isn't that film just wonderful? What I need you to do is be really sure which chunk you're going to write within. You're not going to write a story for the whole film. You're just going to choose your moment. Now, we need you to have a pencil, a pen, a piece of paper. And it is really important that I have your name on that piece of paper, your age and which chunk you're writing. And then I'm able to piece it all together and you can send that into Twitter at Jane Considine, Facebook, The Training Space and hashtag Super Sentence Stackers and I will find it. What I'm going to do now is really help you with your writing and remind you to be involved in super sentence stacking we always have to write nine sentences that is our writing challenge nine sentences for a chunk your nine sentences that were produced yesterday were outstanding i am now going to show you the sort of things I'd like you to include within your nine sentences. And here are today's three writing challenges. The writing challenges today are, number one, I'm gonna ask you to include a richness of sights. We're gonna really consider what Luca our central character, the boy, sees on his adventure. Some things are going to be positive, smiley face, and some things are going to be negative. And it depends what chunk you're writing within. Remember, let your vocabulary show the reader if you're trying to evoke something positive or negative. The other challenge of today is I want us within our writing to ask a question and actually there are lots of question words like would, should and could, you could have a modal verb to start that question or the more obvious ones like what, where, who. But I'm going to give you the challenge actually could you start a question in your story that would kind of search out to the reader almost like you're within your story asking the reader that question the three words I want you to see if you can include could be what or how or should in a moment I'm going to demonstrate the sort of thing I mean the third writing challenge is all about the sounds of words. And we call that alliteration, particularly when they're at the beginning of words. So we're going to actually create a focus sound. The sort of thing I mean is uh, the sounds at the beginning. We could have glowing, glistening, glimmering. Those three words all beginning with the same sound and when we gather words like that together they create reader interest and intrigue. I am now going to be your English writing teacher and I'm going to do some demonstration writing. When I do demonstration writing you're going to see inside the writer's brain. I'm going to show you what my mind is thinking about. You're going to get a window to my thinking. The writer's 
thinking and I'm going to talk out loud my thought processes, the sort of choices I'm making, why I'm making those choices as a writer. I've chosen chunk five. If I was going to hand in my chunk today, I'd write on my piece of paper, chosen chunk five. I'd then write my age. This is very hard for Mrs C. But I am going to tell you. <laughs> oh dear. And then I'm going to write my name, Mrs Considine. All of those things need to be on your piece of paper. Obviously not my age and not my name. It would say something like age eight, Aaron, chosen chunk two. Hashtag super sentence stackers. Then I can find your work, not just Aaron's, all of your work. Okay. I'm now going to be your writing teacher and I've chosen chunk five and I'm going to think about the sights in the story. I'm going to start with the most crucial part of chunk five where the setting is now happening and I'm going to start with the determiner the and let the reader know exactly where we are. We're on the moon. I want to talk very closely about the moon's surface. So I'm going to write the moon's surface and go back and have a reread. And because that surface belongs to the moon, I'm going to put in an apostrophe. An apostrophe to show that the surface belongs to the moon. It's a good job I'm rereading my work. The moon's surface. Now, I'm going to describe the moon's surface using really smiley face, positive words. And it's so luminous and bright at this moment. I'm going to do um, some thesaurus thinking now. I'm going to gather some words and, and I'm going to choose my favourite synonyms that all mean the same thing uh, but which ones have high stickability to match this chunk in the story. Okay, uh, the moon's surface. My first idea is glowed. Um, words that mean the same in this synonym family. Uh, another word I could use is sparkled. Oh, I do like that word. The moon surface sparkled. Uh, another word I could use is glimmered. I like all of those words, but the one that I'm gonna choose here is glimmered. The moon surface glimmered. Oh, I've got to make sure I use the right tense ending there on that verb. Uh, glimmered and then I'm going to drop in an adverb to um, turn up that glimmered even more. Uh, the moon surface glimmered intensely. Oh, I love that. Um, and now I'm going to add in Luca. The moon's surface glimmered intensely. Oh, I, do you know what? When you write, you make mistakes. And I've just gone back and seen I've made a spelling mistake. So I'm going to cross that S out. Good job, I'm rereading my work. The moon's surface glimmered intensely. And let's root it back now to the central character. And Luca was awestruck. Oh, I love that word. Was awestruck by its brightness. By, I'm going to put the brightness. Much more definite. By the brightness. Wow. 
The next writing challenge is, can I ask a question? This is almost like a rhetorical question, drawing the reader's interest in. Um, and I've got a few choices here of words I might want to use to begin the sentence. What? How? Should? I'm going to go have a go at a, at a what sentence to begin with. Um, so I'm going to uh, start with that word, what? And then I'm going to imagine Luca is there. I'm going to think about him feeling awestruck. And actually we want to keep emphasising that. What is this? Um, I'm going to do some thesaurus thinking now uh, so that I've got the right sort of positive words that really uh, capture how wonderful this is. What is this mystifying place? What is this magical place? Magical place. What is this enchanting place? Oh, those words are just oozing with positivity uh, and fascination. Uh, I really love enchanting. I'm going to choose it. What is this enchanting place? I must remember to put in my uh, question mark. Oh, there it is. Wonderful. This is quite a hard challenge now. I've got to gather words with the same sound and um, I also want my reader to know there are lots of shooting stars here. So um, because I know I want to use that word shooting stars, um, I'm going to do a little bit of thinking here. Uh, I'm going to write down shooting stars and then I'm going to think about the sounds at the beginning here. I think there needs to be really positive words. They need to be really bright words. And as I think about that sound, I can think of shimmering. Oh, that's a good word. I can think of shining. Those words are gonna help me now as I try to build some alliteration into this sentence. Hmm. Luca, I don't want to get too far away from our lovely boy who is at the heart of this story. Luca stared. I want to really emphasise how grip and enamoured he is by this adventure and, and the place he's at. Uh, so I'm going to gather um, on my thesaurus thinking space some more words that might create that. Um, dazed is a really good word. He feels dazed. He feels, this is a really long word, Oh, flabbergasted, flabbergasted, flabbergasted. Another word I could use is aghast. Oh, what great words. I actually really like dazed because it hints at the brightness. I'm going to take that word. Um, Lucas said, Dazed. I'm going to drop that in, just like that, in between two commas. Luca stared, dazed. And now I'm going to think about the same sound words. Dazed at the shimmering. Oh, love that word. Shimmering, shining. I'm going to put a comma there. Shining showcase of shooting stars. I'm going to go back and reread that. And I'm just going to take that thinking away. Uh, so 
we can read it really clearly. This is Mrs C's three writing challenges, writing for chunk five. The moon's surface glimmered intensely and Luca was awestruck by the brightness. What is this enchanting place? Luca stared, dazed, at the shimmering, shining showcase of shooting stars. Oh, that is quite a tongue twister with all the alliterative beginnings there. Right, super sentence stackers. It is time now for you to do your bit. I'm gonna send you off to be super sentence stackers and write your chunk for the chosen part of La Luna. Do not forget your name, your age or what chunk you are writing to. Hashtag super sentence stackers. And I want to see your photographs on Twitter at Jane Considine. I want to see your photographs of your work sent to the training space. Send in your work. Remember to use the hashtag super sentence stackers. And I'm going to send you off to write. My last bit of advice is a lot of super sentence stackers love to choose plot point one. And a lot of super sentence stackers love to choose plot point nine. But you'd be very wise to choose a chunk in the middle, maybe four, six or seven. And then you'll have more chance of these getting into the nation's story. I'm going to be reading every single submission. And at 12.30, if you get your story chunk into me early, I will celebrate it at 12.30. But don't worry, the deadline for submission is two o'clock. I cannot wait, cannot wait to read your writing. I will see you all back here at 12.30. Thank you everybody. Bye for now.